My name is Matthew Kale. I'm a professor at Ohio State University. This is my 10th year. Uh, before this, I had postdoc positions at uh, Stanford and at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton. And I did my PhD at the University of Washington in Seattle. When I think of myself as a young mathematician, I think about when I was maybe eight or nine years old, the Rubik's Cube coming on the scene in a big way. And from the first time I saw it, I was hypnotized by it and obsessed with it as a child. So to me, the Rubik's Cube was a, a puzzle, a fun thing to try to figure out or to try to learn how to do. And then it's much later that I learned that it, it actually has something you know, mathematical to it, that we can describe the structure of the Rubik's Cube using mathematics like combinatorics or group theory. I feel like I work in the intersection of, of different areas of mathematics. Um, at heart, though, I, I feel like I'm a topologist, so I study topological spaces, which can be, you know, it's really the study of shape, although the shapes that we're studying can be uh, quite complicated, and they could be, for example, very high dimensional. So what we're looking at is uh, a system where you just have kind of a, a, a square or rectangular board and that's your sort of universe. And the atoms there are just little squares and they have to keep their sides parallel to the sides of the big square that they live inside. So this looks a little bit like uh, the, the 15 puzzle that we played with when we were kids. A configuration space is a space or a shape that sort of encodes all possible arrangements uh, of the pieces. It's of interest to physicists because it's, it's one of the simplest um, models of matter that you can imagine. You know, your atoms are just little squares, uh, but it's, it's somehow complicated enough or rich enough that they think it goes through something like a liquid-solid phase transition. So but they, they run kind of ex computational experiments with this sort of system and and there's some reason to think that once the squares take up, the little squares take up a certain percentage of the area, that the behavior of the system changes and that the squares sort of start to lock up and it's like freezing. That's the analogy that they make. But this is what the physicists say from their computational experiments and there's been very little known about it mathematically. So we studied the topology of the underlying configuration space. So, the con or I should say configuration spaces, because you get a different configuration space um, for every choice of parameters. Um, but what, what we are most interested in is, you know, sort of as you vary your parameters, like how many squares you have and how big they are, uh, how does the topology of the configuration space change? It's as if you, you make your squares a little bit um, bigger and all of a sudden, the, the shape of all possible configurations uh, has millions of holes in it. Um, and what's happened is that because the squares got a little bit bigger, there's regions that are no longer accessible. You can't put the squares where they were before because they're a little too big now. And to try to put them there would result in overlap. But it's not just like one big hole. There's many millions of holes uh, all spread out throughout the space. So, so somehow we can detect that with the, the tools of algebraic topology. One of the figures in our paper is we have two different axes and one of them is the volume fraction, or, you know, what percentage of the area do the little squares take up in the big square. And then the other axis is more abstract. It's, it's something like 
what dimension of homology are we looking at? So you could be looking for one dimensional holes in your high dimensional space, or you could be looking for two dimensional holes or higher, but we put it on two axes. And the analogy that we're working with here is that this is something like pressure on one axis and temperature or entropy on the other axis. And that we see these phase portraits for water where, you know, as you vary the temperature and pressure, you go through different states. And we have some preliminary results seeing that you go through different sort of topological states as you vary these parameters. And we're able to show that, you know, outside of this zone, there's certain behavior. And inside of this slightly smaller zone, there's this other kind of behavior and that they're really qualitatively different. Mm -hmm.